Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a yet another viewer request video, um, kind of an extension of the previous video on how to use Streamlit. Um, in this case, I want to show you how you can use Streamlit to visualize your Snowflake tables. Um, so I'm not really gonna focus on the process of getting data into Snowflake, the ELT process that's gonna actually back this data. And so for this example, I'm just gonna use some dummy data I just pulled from uh, the Snowflake kind of available database, but this can run, you know, some more flow can run on any of your existing Snowflake data. So if you want to figure out how to get your data in Snowflake, refer to the many other videos I have made on that. Um, but this video is really going to just focus on how you can use Streamlit and Snowflake together to visualize your Snowflake data. Um, and so what's also going to use this is, uh, it, what were enables this, a recent Snowflake release is Snowpark. Um, which is a set of libraries, runtimes that can deploy non-SQL code. So Python, Java, Scala, in this case, it's going to be Python since that's what Streamlit is. It's a Python application. Um, and so that's what it enables this to be possible. Um, and so I guess just to give you also an understanding of what Streamlit is, if you haven't caught my previous video, it is a really quick way to just build uh, dashboards out of your data without needing to, you know, set up something like Tableau or any kind of structure where you can just say, hey, you know, make a chart out of this CSV and you can see it'll immediately render that chart um, within your browser once you uh, trigger the script. Um, and so you can, again, heard a previous video on kind of the exactly how that works. But within Snowflake, what you're actually going to want to do um, is just, you know, have a Snowflake account, make sure that you actually, um, have access to Snowpark, you should, but if you're using a trial account, but you know, just to uh, make sure. And then you're also gonna wanna uh, enable Anaconda Python packages, just to make sure that you don't run any issues with um, your Python code. And then, um, so if you wanna just replicate this dummy data that I'm gonna use here, so just so you know what the data is, we are going to accept these terms, fantastic, done. And then, yeah, so I just set up a fresh Snowflake account for this. So you, everything you're going to see here to set it up, I will have to do. So don't worry about, you know, any kind of secret setup that was getting done here. Um, so here we want to get data, um, which seems like there isn't any more. So let's browse data projects, um, search for Noma. So Noma environment data atlas cool so here search for this uh and let is let's see if we can get uh okay so now we need to change our cloud region um and so give me a second so what i just had to do there was go to my admin account um and then go create a new account uh within the oregon west region so this should now work for us so one second Cool. So as long as you have an account in AWS West, Oregon, I don't know why it's only allowed here, but this is the only place you can get this data set, I guess. Um, so you know, I, I'm not, yeah, just not really sure why. Um, but let me just make sure. Click and get. Uh, okay, so now I need to add my username and email. That's fine. Just not use a second. Do, 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 do. Let's go to get my email um, default role. Okay, save. Cool. So profile save. Get this information. Sweet. So now we have our environment data just pulled from public data set. Um, and you know, obviously, you can do this for any other Snowflake data for testing. Um, so somewhat useful. Um, and here, if you go look at the data just to get an idea of what's going on here. Um, we have some data around the environment. Um, and perfect. So once your data is, you have a warehouse, uh, I just forgot to create one, again, new account. You'll see this is just various statistics around, you know, uh, the demographic statistics of Macedonia, uh, discharge of wastewater, and just all the different various data points, um, data sets that make up, you know, environmental data. Um, and you kind of have a data atlas here where you have explanations of all of your data here. Um, and yeah, just super fun stuff. Um, so now you just kind of have a basic understanding of the data. I just kind of want to look at it so you, you know, aren't totally taken by surprise when you see the Streamlit dashboard. Um, so we have now, go to our Streamlit app. 
So to create our uh, Streamlit app, we will first need to grant, or let's just create a Streamlit app. I think we should be able to do this with account admin. Um, so we'll call this Streamlit test. It's not Streamlist. Um, okay, cool. So let's do this example script here. And since this is a fresh account, let's create a database schema. Um, all right, so let's all run this. Grant, uh, create, oh, sorry, there we go. Okay, so here we need to modify this with actually our specific schema. So one second, just making sure I understand this. Um, and then so what we're going to do here is grant usage on, don't actually need to do these. So we just need to grant the ability to create Streamlit um, on schema. So let's go look at our schema. Okay, so after some serious trial and error, because I guess you can't clone from a shared file or create a Streamlit app from it, you're gonna to need to create a new database. Um, I just created environment data atlas one, um, and we will see if we can figure out how to get our way through this. Um, so here what we'll do um, is do a little switcheroo here. Um, since it seems like that data is pretty busted, um, I'm gonna switch into kind of doing some financial data uh, here as well. Um, some of the perks of you know doing all these live with you is sometimes you gotta improvise and pivot just like a startup. Um, so one second. So now we're in our Streamlit application. So just like you would, um, you know, work with any kind of Streamlit data, you have here this available um, to kind of write your Python scripts and then run it directly next to your Snowflake data. And so I'll show you why that's valuable in a second. Um, and I guess I won't even. I'll, Tell you why that is right now is because this allows you to easily access your data and then visualize it without needing to pull it into an external service pay for you know the io operations from that you can just create uh, reporting and visualization directly on your snowflake data within snowflake super lightweight using uh snowflake so here also so the new data we're going to download um, is going to be cyber sin financial data So let's see if we can find it. So here we have uh, CyberSyn financial data and economic essentials. So similar before, it's gonna download this um, and I'll kind of skip some of this because I uh, don't want to have to bother you again with all this. Um, so one second, I'll switch back to Streamlit. And so just something to note here is that you'll actually need to, and that's kind of why I was screwing around before, was that you'll actually need to create two different databases, one for your Streamlit app and then one for your actual data. So here I'm just using the existing environment data atlas database because I set up the Streamlit access on it. Um, and then I also have my separate CyberSyn financial data um, because I'm actually not able to, you're not able to give yourself ownership of this public data so you can't do it side by side because you need to have full ownership of that database to be able to install Streamlit within there. Um, so if we go back into our Streamlit application, um, and so to get started, because we just have this example one, and I don't really care about some random example of data, um, I want to show you how to actually create your own. So let's delete all of this and start all from scratch. Uh, so so just kind of like a Python script, we are going to need to import all of our packages. Um, and so over here, um, we're going to import date time, pandas, streamlet, obviously, um, Snowpark context to get active session, and then from streamlet for code, data frame markdown, all this select, just the kind of different Streamlit objects that you can use to visualize your data within Streamlit. Um, and up here you can, because we're within kind of our Streamlit app section, you can also install any additional packages that you'll need. Um, so let's see, let's get pandas in here. Um, and then we'll also need, uh, well, we have Streamlit. Yeah, we already have Streamlit. And let's see, Snowflake. Yeah, we already got everything else. Okay, oh, date time, sorry. Date time. All right, well, I guess we don't need to. Um, or we'll get an error if we do. 
So now after we've gotten our uh, Streamlit app set up, we can set our configuration. So setting up for wide, uh, titling it just their Cybersyn financial package preview. Um, and then we are going to set our uh, database and schema that we will be using. Um, so this is actually a little out of date. So we'll need to update this with our uh, whatever, with this full name. So let's see if it copies the full name. Perfect. Cool. So here we're copying from our uh, database, or just setting a database variable that will be used for our SQL series, or SQL queries, not SQL series. Um, and then the schema within that, just to double check, is still CyberSyn. Um, so we're all good on that front. So now what we can do um, is get the current credentials. So just get active session. Um, and then we will format SQL, return, remove padded space so it looks good in the uh, code and in the UI element. Um, so just doing some kind of SQL manipulation on our code for when it's visualized. And then what we'll do is define an actual function. Um, so here, I'm going to paste a big block of code and then I'm going to kind of go through it step by step of what's happening here. Um, so if I go through define deposits, scroll up here. So here, what we're doing um, is just creating a SQL query that's going to kind of build us a table uh, within Streamlet that we can visualize. So here we're selecting uh, variables like uh, creating categories like small banks, all of the banks, top 25 is bank types, value is deposits to the value of each of the deposits in those sections, um, selecting that from our existing financial data, joining it, um, and then also create it, you know, grouping it by domestically charted small and large commercial banks, uh, setting a date for anything past 1999, um, and then ordering it by bank type and date. Um, then we're just going to have deposits by date time, so bringing that into a pandas data frame, then visualizing it in a markdown where we're going to have um, a value chart tab, uh, deposits by size of bank to actually visualize this, you'll see what it looks like in a second, uh, our value chart tab, deposits by bank size, um, and then this is just kind of some different formatting for how we're going to actually visualize this. So setting our X as date, so showing it over time, um, our Y as deposits, quantitative, and then also it will show um, the color as bank type. Um, and then, so here we have st theme streamlet with value data frame tabs. So what this is just going to do is when we reference that data frame tab up here, um, you can see that in the uh, markdown we are going to populate that with the deposits by bank size um, and then just do the use container width to make sure it renders nicely. Then after we're done with that, so we created one chart. So let's see how this runs. Errors. Incredible. So, so I had to do some playing around. Um, I didn't actually initialize the charts at the end. So if you go through this, there's actually a lot more charts in this example. Um, so they're all defined essentially the same where you're just taking the files, defining them exactly how you would with a normal pandas chart. So exactly how you're used to doing kind of any data science work. Um, and then if you click on this little frame at the bottom uh, left, uh, let me just move my screen up so you can see it. So if you see this little frame at the bottom right or bottom left, you can click this to open and close the preview um, to see your Streamlit app update in real time. So as you make changes, um, you can see them reflected here because otherwise you're kind of just stuck going into here to reload the app. So you'll see every time you exit out and reload, um, you'll see a reload here, but you can also reboot an application. Um, and it's generally just very easy to use. Um, I really like this approach to, you know, having a lightweight way to just create reports right on top of your data within Snowflake. Um, and I really encourage you guys to check it out. I mean, all you need to do is basically just have your database and schema, um, and then you can run select statements, pull that data directly from your Snowflake database while staying within Snowflake, um, convert it into a pandas data frame, or yeah, just by doing the dot or two pandas, referring to that session you just created. Um, and then you just use that to create a markdown document, create charts with the Vega light chart. You can see that uh, Streamlit has a bunch of different charting options that uh, you can go explore. Um, you can see some of them are represented here where this is just an example, Vega light chart. I can still go look at the raw data. Um, you can also see the SQL query that actually generated this chart as well. So really, you know, 
functional way that you not only get the report, but you understand how the report was created if you want to replicate it for um, another data source or something. Um, so I hope this helped out, uh, especially the person that requested it. Um, and if you'd like to see Streamlit extended into another use case, please let me know. Uh, I really like working with this. And so I would love to hear about any other use cases you'd like to see explored. Um, and without further ado, data guy out. Peace.